Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the radial menu and that is also the reason I'm so close to the camera today that you can actually see what I'm talking about because the radial menu is more for the VR person, not the spectator. And I tried to flip it so you can actually better see it. Not sure if this is working greatly, but yeah, yeah, it's working fine. So here you can see the radial menu and this one, I really love it. Um, it's so cool to spawn items in game or actually you can you can do anything with it for example spawn explosions aldo <laughs> um, but you can use it for whatever you want so um, i have a lot of different examples for example i use it to teleport on different directions and i've created a tutorial about that and most of the knowledge in this tutorial is uh, still valid but i'm going to show you some updates on this one. So in my example scene here you can see at the beginning there is no radial menu and the reason for this is we need to add it to our pawn. So this is also covered in our pawn tutorial but let's get go quickly through this. So the VR pawn is this one here. So I'm going to open this one up and we have the component UI radial menu and in there we can define the radial buttons we want to actually have on our radial menu 1 and 2. Yes, there are two of them. Not a lot of people use them, but it's great. For example, you can have one for the left and one for the right hand. So let's go with just two basics here. I have added the bookmarks. So in this case, I also need to add them to the component UI palette. And also all of this is covered in our data asset and VR pawn setup. So if you are not familiar what I'm doing here, you can check out those videos. So this should actually be everything um, in my control preset. There is already a button for the uh, radial menu one. So this should already work if I press the phase two button. I'm on the Oculus here. I'm also going to add the radial menu 2 to the thumbstick press. So I have both of them. And now if I hit play, you can see the radial menu is appearing. I have my two menu items, one with the devices. We haven't added any there. And one with our two bookmarks. I can spawn them. I can track them in the world. So all of this is already working. Also, if I press the radial button 2, you can see there's my other menu, but it's still empty because we haven't added anything in there. So we can do this next. So let's go for the keyboard one. And now I can spawn the keyboard with my other radial menu. So not this one here, but this one here. Okay, now I'm quickly going to show you how you can create your own radial button. As I said, I have another tutorial for teleportation and you can check this out. But for now, let's go with a new child actor here. So I've created an instance of my radial button and in there I can now define the look of it. So for example, let's add a static mesh and you've probably guessed it. It's a bomb and we're going to do some explosions here. So let's scale this way down because the radial button is actually quite small. And with the component select, I can define what should actually happen if the user selects this button. So yeah, you can really be creative. You can open maps, you can teleport the character, you can spawn objects or sounds, play movies, everything you want. So in this case, we're going to spawn a simple explosion at the location of the radial button and we're going to add it to our radial menu too. So now if I go ahead and hit play, I should now be able to see the bomb in the other menu 
there it is and if I select it the explosion will be triggered and all the other things like selection highlighting and that the things get bigger or that I can select it with the laser all of this is already working so next I quickly wanted to show you how we can for example change the highlight logic so we're still having the highlight logic from the parent so this was the the outline and the selection button getting bigger on selection but we can expand it and add our own logic in the in there for example let's actually rotate the bomb a little bit if the user selects this uh, hovers over this radial button so I'm just using a timeline here to lerp between two rotators let's quickly check which axis I'm going to use and what value so just rotate it upwards also important that I check the use last keyframe here and now if I hover over my bomb it should rotate so this is working perfectly we can end this tutorial with a nice explosion bye